All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Howie Heckman. Uh, today I'll be giving you guys the uh, release of uh, version 4.0 of Clearstream RFID and talking about all the new features that we've added to the software uh, to make it even more powerful and flexible R fixed RFID tool. Um, also, before I get started, I would like to make mention that all of the software that I show you guys today is available from our Clearstream uh, RFID.com website. So if you want to trial the software after uh, the webinar today or upgrade to version 4.0, you can go to our uh, website and uh, go to the um, take a trial link there and download the latest installer for Clearstream. And uh, you can trial everything I show you today. The only limit in trial mode is that you have a time frame of when you can use the software. Uh, so just like to make note of that, please uh, go to clearstreamrfid.com to get the software. Okay, so with that, let me jump back to the PowerPoint here. Uh, first, I'd like to just say for people that are just looking at web and, uh, Clearstream, uh, I want just a little bit of extra information about what it is. Uh, Clearstream RFID is a simple to use fixed RFID routing tool. It really maps fixed RFID readers to a destination database of your choice. And it can be an ODBC database, a text file, or an Excel spreadsheet. And there's no programming involved. I'll show you guys how the setup is done in just a little bit here. But there's no programming involved. So you're really just configuring, you're, you're clicking, adding readers to the environment. You're picking where you want those readers to send the tags that are collected by those readers. And you have all the flexibility for when the readers are powered up, maybe what triggers the readers. So you, have, what, you hook up a light sensor to one of these readers or a motion detector. You can, through Clearstream, configure that reader to trip and turn on and start scanning for tags at that point. Um, there's no programming involved in the software. You're just configuring everything. Uh, and it, from that, it makes it very easy to get up and running. Uh, and like I mentioned, uh, there are you can send tags to uh, ODBC databases. So that can be something like Microsoft Access, SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, something along those lines, or Excel spreadsheets or text files. You can also configure those as destination uh, data sources as well. So with that, um, because Clearstream is so easy to use and there's no programming involved, it really is the, the quickest uh, fixed RFID solution. So it allows users to actually trial fixed RFID very, very quickly. So what we've seen from people uh, that have trialed the software, it can go rapidly from a proof of concept into a production environment. Because you can just take a single fixed RFID reader, get it working to uh, play with the technology, see how it will work in your environment, and with minimal upfront investment, you can get this application up and running. And then you can convert it into a production environment by taking that same piece of software that you've installed and configured for one reader and just add the readers as you need them into your, uh, into your uh, application. Uh, and these applications can vary uh, wi widely from many different types of uh, applications. So uh, from what we've seen out in the field, we've seen real-time work and process tracking, stockroom inventories. Uh, shipping and receiving verification, and many, many other different types of applications. Uh, one of the ones that has been coming up quite a bit here is this like work and process type tracking applications where people are actually t tracking pieces of equipment as they move throughout an environment. So they're almost setting up the antennas and the readers in their environment as different zones throughout the facility, and they're keeping track of the equipment at those zones. And then through their interface, they can see what exactly pieces of equipment are at each one of these zones in a real time uh, passive environment. So there's no users actually scanning these items as they're moving throughout a facility. We've seen a lot of stockroom inventory. So maybe you just want to pull a stockroom every once in a while uh, with a fixed RFID reader. Again, it's a passive application. There's no user going to the stockroom and scanning the contents of that, uh, of that, that stockroom. It's just every once in a while powering up the readers, scanning the inventory, and you have a full spreadsheet, if maybe in that type of situation, where you have all of those tags scanned. Uh, and any person that needs that information, it would be available to them uh, in their database. Also, shipping and receiving verification. Taking a pallet and just walking it through a portal, like you see in that picture there on the slide, uh, you can uh, use these uh, RFID readers to passively scan the pallets as they go through the portal uh, and collect that information just to verify that uh, all of the equipment's there, all of it, it's all the uh, correct equipment, and so on. Um, so with uh, Clearstream RFID, since there is no programming involved, it really allows you to set up for these different types of applications in a way that you want to with the flexibility that you can send this da uh, tag data to the database that maybe you already have in, in your environment for inventory or something like that. You can hook it up to that and really see how the technology is going to work and see that ROI before you actually go out and custom write uh, fixed RFID software 
or custom write an application that will handle these readers. It allows you through that trial environment to set everything up, see how it's going to work, is it going to work in your environment at all, and then go ahead and build on that into your actual production environment. Um, so it really is the quickest way to actually see how fixed RFID readers will work uh, and uh, use them in test environment to move into production. Uh, so now the next slide here I have is actually the, the, the uh, changes to uh, or the improvements we've made in version 4.0. Uh, what I would like to just maybe elaborate a little bit on some of the reasoning why we've put some of these features in. Now a lot of our installs that we've had, ClearStream again is a passive application. So it's sitting there running, collecting data out in the field. Uh, but it's relying on different bits of the environment to always be up uh, so that maybe if you're doing a stock room or let's say let's go to the work and process type application, you're scanning a zone uh, of equipment out in a different area of a facility and maybe the network goes down or something like that or there's a power outage at that location. Um, the reader goes down and you're no longer collecting that information and there's no way for the users to know because it's passive immediately that that reader has gone down and it's not collecting the pieces of equipment that are going through that zone. So with Clearstream 4.0, we put a lot of work into being able, able to notify the person required to say, hey, there is a problem in the network here or the Clearstream server has lost communication to a reader out in the field. You need to go do something to ensure that that reader comes back online and you're scanning the equipment that's going through this environment. Um, so the first biggest feature of Clearstream 4.0 is uh, this system status notifications feature. It allows you to send emails to whoever you need to in order to notify them that something has happened with Clearstream. It could be something like a critical error. Maybe the database connection has gone down because we have a lot of uh, customers that are connecting Clearstream to a cloud database or like an Amazon uh, Web Services database on a Amazon AWS server. And maybe if that connection goes down, the internet goes down from your facility, that would be a critical error there that you'd want to be notified. Uh, you'd want to send that out to some user to say, hey, this reader is no longer collecting from, uh, data because it can't connect to the database. Uh, the other, the second one here is reader connection lost. So if a connection is lost to the reader, Clearstream will continually pull to try and reestablish connection to that reader. Uh, and when, if it can communicate with the reader again, it will reestablish connection, power it back on, and begin scanning for tags and download tags that were collected offline. Um, but if it's lost and reestablished, you can get a notification on that. Uh, if for some reason just the reader itself crashes, it can notify the a user that, hey, this reader needs to be uh, looked at in order to come back online so that this critical information that Clearstream is collecting uh, is reestablished and can send that information back to the uh, database that you have selected. Uh, we also have a new feature for auto restarting a reader if a re if reconnection fails. And what this basically does is Clearstream has always, if a reader goes down, it's going to try to reestablish connection. But if that reader is in some state that doesn't allow it to reestablish a connection, maybe there's another application that has requested use of the reader, or maybe just the um, LLRP server on that reader has gone down, you can have Clearstream say, hey, I can't reconnect you. Let me try to issue a reset command to that reader, which will basically do a warm boot of the reader, recycle it, and when it comes back on the, online, it will automatically reestablish connection to the reader so that there's minimal time that that reader is down in the environment. So it's a kind of a fail safe to say, hey, I cannot reconnect to this reader. Go ahead and try to restart it as a, as a last step to try and get this reader back online. Because maybe it's in some state where it won't allow connections from a the Clearstream server. So go ahead and restart it and see if that will bring it back online when it restarts. So that's another big feature. And it ties in with the event notifications so that a user is notified of these readers going down. And also Clearstream is actively trying to reestablish connection to the reader uh, so that it's not just sitting there in a state that may not be collecting the critical information that you need to for a zone in your facility or from a portal, a shipping portal, when you're trying to do shipping verification or something along those lines. OK, now the next feature before I jump over to that slide, I want to uh, kind of elaborate on something a little bit before I get there. Uh, Clearstream, every time you, uh, the fixed reader scan a tag, you get a number of different bits of information collected and sent to your destination. So a tag goes by the antenna. Uh, the uh, antenna is collect, uh, scans that tag. 
That tag is then sent to the destination that you have selected. Um, that, uh, in the information that also gets sent with that tag is a date timestamp, a reader name, an antenna name, uh, the signal strength that the tag was read, and certain fixed bits of information that are fields of information that are collected every time a tag is scanned. Uh, so uh, the reader name and the antenna name, for instance, those can be used for location. So a reader name may be uh, you know, stock uh, warehouse one, antenna name it might be stock room two. So when you go in that antenna, it's scanned by that, it's collected into the database. So when you look at that database, you can see the location of that tag. With Clearstream 4.0, what we've added is the, is the ability to add custom fields. Now, custom fields allows you to specify your own fields that are collected every time a reader scans a tag. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to capture, um, or let's take this example. If you have a user memory bank that has a number of fields of information in that user memory bank, you can not only just capture the entire contents of the user memory bank, but let's say it has a part number and a serial number. You can have these custom fields added to the reader so that every time a tag is scanned, it parses out the uh, part number and serial number and posts them as separate fields to your uh, database so that it will capture additional fields of information and send them along to the destination that you have selected with the tag. Uh, another um, example of that, We've had requests in the past for people that just want to uh, capture the value of one, a static value of one as a quantity for every tag that's posted to their database. So with custom field, you could add that field to the configuration, call it quantity or whatever you'd like, and then it's available in the mapping so that when the uh, tag is scanned, that quantity one, which is just a static value of one, gets posted to the destination database with that static value. So you can do a lot of different things like that to uh, customize exactly what fields of information get captured and sent to the destination. Um, so it offers a lot of flexibility in um, uh, customizing what gets posted to your database. Uh, so everything else here, uh, some of the other things, that have, mainly these have been requested by our users in the field. Um, so we have custom date time formatting, so you can customize what the date time stamp is and uh, improve the resolution of a date time uh, of a tag being posted to the database. So you can go down to less than second resolution to your, um, or greater than second resolution to your database um, if you need a better, higher resolution uh, time being posted to the destination. Or if you didn't want to post maybe the date, you just wanted a timestamp being posted. You can customize that date timestamp to be posted uh, to your database. Uh, we have something called the GPI debounce timer. Basically, this if you're using a motion sensor or light sensor to send or trip the reader to start scanning for tags, when that time frame ends, you can specify a time that it won't trip again. So if there's still activity within the field of view of that motion sensor, but you don't want to trip the scan again, you can use the debounce timer to sort of turn off the scanning for a length of time after it's scanned so that it doesn't read again. Um, you can also do selectable tag send for GPI triggers. Uh, this allows you to specify multiple GPI triggers uh, and send those tags, send the tags that are sent based on which GPI was tripped to a selectable destination. I'll go into that in a little bit more uh, once we get back into the, um, the demonstration. Uh, but on top of that, there's many more bug fixes and improvements. We've tried, uh, as always, to improve the performance of Clearstream. Uh, posting uh, tags to the database in high volume environments and things like that. So with that, let me jump out of the PowerPoint. I'm actually going to do a demonstration of Clearstream 4.0 now and kind of show you some of these features. Uh, as I go through this, guys, please, um, if you have any questions that you'd like me to touch on at the end of the uh, uh, PowerPoint today or the end of the presentation, uh, just please feel free to use your question panel. There are some questions that popped up, it looks like I probably have answered them. Um, as I go, but I will get to these at the end of the webinar. Okay, so let me hop out of the PowerPoint, uh, and I will go to Clearstream 4.0. So here it is. This is Clearstream 4.0. This is the screen you would open the application to after installation. So once you go to our website at clearstreamrfid.com, download the sample application, 
uh, download the sample installation, you can go ahead and uh, run the installer, and it will open up to this screen here. Now, the way Clearstream works is there's a source of your tag information and a destination. On the source side, you would go ahead and select RFID for a fixed RFID reader. Okay, and this is where you're going to configure the reader that is collecting the tag information in your environment. On the destination side, you pick where you want to send the tags every time this reader scans a tag. So the options, again, are ODBC, Excel, or text. Uh, I'm going to select ODBC. It's the most recommended uh, destination type that we... Um, is this destination type that we do recommend. Uh, when you select ODBC, there is a Clearstream RFID sample database that's provided with the installer. So you will see that in this list here after installation of Clearstream. So go ahead and select uh, Clearstream RFID sample. Once you do that, it will be populated with the, the uh, tables in that database. So if you guys had a SQL Server database or My, MySQL or something along those lines, once you select that database from here, you'll see all of the tables in that database populated in the table drop-down. So if you already had a, a destination you'd like to write to in a SQL database, you would select that from here. Uh, so I'm going to do the RFID tag list. You guys can all do the same if you're uh, <coughs> trialing the software. Uh, you'll, you will see that RFID tag list installed with uh, Clearstream. The next thing I'm going to do for the demonstration here actually is on the destination side. I want to keep track of the tags and as they change in the environment. So I'm going to go to the Options tab. And rather than post tabs and append them to the table, I'm going to do something called an Update Existing and Append If Not Found based on the EPC value. And basically all this means is every time this reader over here collects a tag, try to update it in the database. Don't post it as new. So uh, like I mentioned before, with that zone tracking, the work and process type application, this is what you would typically do there, because every time a tag is scanned at one of the zones, say one antenna is zone one, one antenna is zone two, once it's scanned by those two zone one, zone two antennas, it's updated in the database with that information. So if you're looking at your database, you see where that tag is. You'll see, hey, it was scanned at zone one, but now since it's moved over and scanned by antenna two, the database will show it at zone two. So this will limit the number of tags that get sent to the uh, destination as well. <clears throat> okay, so now all I need to do is configure my reader. So I don't have any reader currently configured on the uh, this side here, so I have to add one to my configuration. So I'm going to hit the readers button. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click the add button here to add the reader that I'd like within my environment. Uh, so this will be based on the manufacturer that you're currently trying to add your configuration. So maybe if you have a Zebra Motorola reader, uh, Intermec or Impinge or when any one of these other supported readers, uh, you would select that type here. So for the demonstration today, I'm going to go ahead and select the Zebra Motorola option. Okay. Uh, the only thing I really need to do to get this working is go ahead and uh, enter an IP address or host name to this option here. You can also find this on your network. If you click the Find button, hit Start, it will find all of the fixed RFID readers in your environment, and then you can just hit Select and add it to this configuration here. So you're, uh, it's, you don't have to know the IP address of the reader. You just plug it in, come into Clearstream here, and add it to this list. So I know the IP address. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add it here, 4.101. When I tab out of that, you'll see it, it successfully connected to that reader. You got the reader ID here. And now I have one reader configured in my environment, the fixed RFID reader one. Uh, it's going to be added to the list. If you have additional fixed RFID readers, you just add them here. And then you go ahead and name them. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say this is a warehouse one reader or something along those lines. Uh, it's my single reader. Now right now it's set up in a default state. So I have my warehouse one reader. This is the IP address. I have down below all the default configuration. So it's in a continuous scan mode. So when I power this thing up, it's always going to be scanning for tags and always sends them to the destination I have selected in the destination tab. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Uh, you'll see now I have my reader here called Warehouse 1 as my source. I have the destination set up as RFID tag list. And now I have uh, the tag list on the left-hand side here, the fields of information that are collected sent to the destination. So let's just start this up really quickly. Okay, so it powers up that reader. It, this reader is scanning for tags. 
I'll just let it scan for a second. I'm going to jump over to the data viewer, and here are the tags that I just collected from that scan. So you can see I scanned 29 tags. It posted all of that information to our database. You can see the start event, or the reader name here is Warehouse 1. So we know this Warehouse 1 reader had just scanned all of these tags and posted them to the destination. So that's how easy it is to get up and running with ClearStream RFID if you want to uh, just trial the technology and see how you can get it to post to a destination database. So now let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about some of these 4.0 features that kind of will build on top of this to make it a, a very robust um, environment for uh, what you guys are trying to configure. Uh, so the first thing I mentioned was the email notifications in 4.0. So to configure those, you would go up to the Tools menu here and go to Preferences. There's the new uh, two tabs on this Preferences dialog. The one that's important here is the Notifications list. And now you can see here, I have added a new notification to my environment. I've set up my uh, email settings here to send an email to uh, my address here at ClearStream RFID. And you can see I've set the uh, subject to be Reader Alert. And I am uh, listening for the events within ClearStream for reader connection lost and also readers stopped. Okay, so I'm going to turn that on. Um, if I go over, actually, I got the email for that one that I just did there. You can see here, when I started up that reader, I got an email saying readers were issued a stop command along with the IP address that stopped, the, re uh, where the reader name, and the reader ID along with the model number. Um, so you can see I received an email saying, hey, somebody has stopped this uh, reader. Maybe you need to go check it out. Um, and this would be the indication of that. So if I were to actually go back, start this reader up, power it up again. Here is my email. I'm going to go ahead and hit Stop Selected. Uh, as I wait here, Clearstream should be saying, hey, this reader has been stopped. They want to be notified on this. This needs to get sent out to uh, someone in the uh, field. You can see here I got the email again that says a reader was issued a stop command, and it's that same reader because I just start, started and stopped it again. Um, now that's based on me hitting stop all, but you can see from the notifications area there, I do have uh, the reader connection lost, which would be something that some type of other issue on the network. So maybe the network's gone down, our communication to that reader has gone down, maybe just the power has gone down at that reader's location. Uh, you'll get an email saying, hey, this you need to go look at this reader here. Uh, you can also have it send you an email if the connection was reestablished. So if there was no user intervention for that reader, it will send you an email to say, hey, we've reestablished connection to this reader and it's currently reading tags successfully. So this is the new notif notifications for Clearstream 4.0. And again, it's a feature that we put in because um, installations with large uh, environments that maybe don't necessarily have like GPO set up where there's lights flashing or buzzers buzzing uh, to give the user at that location indication that the reader is actually actively working. Uh, they need a way to know that a reader has gone down in Clearstream because if you're relying on this data of keeping track of items throughout a facility and a, a zone goes down, that could mess up the entire workflow in that facility because you're not seeing these items at each location. So with these new notification features of Clearstream 4.0, people will be updated of that uh, information that a reader has stopped, a reader has gone down, uh, there's been some other type of critical error in Clearstream. Um, so go ahead and take a look at it. And um, so people will be notified of that. I'll just check if these questions. Okay, a couple other questions have popped in. I will get to all the questions at the question period at the end of the webinar. Um, okay, so that's the notifications within Clearstream. Now let's jump back over to uh, the, some of the other big features here, and they're done within the actual configuration of the reader itself. So the one which is very easy to configure is this option for restarting a reader if reconnection fails. You'll find that on the device tab for your reader. So I have this 4.101 reader, my warehouse one reader. I can if I like, which is on by default. <coughs> attempt to restart that reader if the reconnection fails. Because you can try to connect to these readers, and they may still be on the network, and they may still be able to get a restart command, but they aren't allowing connections to the reader to download tags and collect the tag information. So this would force the reader to reboot so that Clearstream can say, hey, last ditch effort here. Let me restart this reader, just killing everything on the reader. Start, start it back up, and then re, uh, it will automatically try to restart establish that connection uh, to keep that reader going. 
So again, it's another feature that we've put into in the large installations, even small installations, uh, where these readers uh, need to be up and running and to minimize any downtime. Uh, this will essentially force it down for a period of time, but it's only in the case of Clearstream not being able to reestablish connection to that reader. Um, okay, so that's the reader restart connection option. The next one here, uh, you can see there's a new tab on the readers form. Uh, it's called custom fields. Custom fields is where you're defining your own custom fields to add to the reader. So these are the fields of information right now that are collected by this uh, warehouse one reader, the EPC, the tag identifier of memory bank, user memory bank, and so on. Let's say I wanted to add an additional field. I'm going to go ahead and hit the add button here. Uh, it'll add a field to this tree view. Let's call this, I want to capture the company name of this tag. I'm going to go ahead and name this field company name. Because let's say, uh, I'm going to set up a simple sample here. Let's say certain tags that come in with a prefix uh, that are from company A, and another other tags that come into your environment, maybe through like a loading dock or something like that, come from company B, and they always start with a different uh, uh, prefix on those tags. We can go ahead and configure a custom field so that information is sent to the database automatically. So what I'm going to do is actually make this to have uh, two possible values. The first one, let's call it uh, ACMECO. This is the first possible value that this tag, that this field can have, and we'll set the, uh, we'll set it to be a static value of ACMECO. Um, and what we're going to do is say if the EPC, and I'll describe this a little more in detail in a second, starts with, uh, I think I have an E of some of the tags. If I do, uh, so what this says here is, I have a extra field in my reader called company name that can take a value from ACMECO, which is a static value ACMECO, and only do that if the EPC that scanned starts with an E. So any tag that we scan that starts with an E, we know it came from ACMECO. We want to tr capture that field of information in our database to say ACMECO. We know that that's the, the, um, the, the company. We're going to capture that information. You could probably do this example on the database side as well, uh, but this is kind of a sample here where it shows you how you can do it in, um, in Clearstream. So now let's make it a second possible uh, value, and we'll call the second one maybe big company, big co, uh, and with a static value, big co. Now we're going to say this one, uh, if the EPC starts with one, I think these tags that I set up. So if now this tag is scanned with EPC, use this value, which is a static value, big company. If the EPC starts with E, use this value. And now we're going to go ahead and close this, and we're going to map that company name. You can see it's a new field in our dropdown called company name on the source side. Let's map it to this tag event field. Okay. Now watch what happens here when I save this and start it up. Okay, so we saved our project. I'm going to go ahead and go to the start stop. Now you saw that the start, uh, I mapped that to the tag event. I mapped it to the tag event field. Right now the tag event says not supported in all these values. Um, you can see I have some tags that start with E, some that start with 1. I'm going to go ahead and start this reader up. It starts scanning tags. Um, as I refresh this now, you can see what happens here is that any tag that starts with one now has this additional field, this custom field that's set to a value of big company. Any tag that starts with an E is set to the Acme company value. Any other one here is set to blank, it's not supplied those values. That's kind of a simple example of what you can do with the custom fields. Let me go back there and just kind of talk about it a little bit further. So let me hit stop. You can also see all of these tags were scanned. Some of them down below, but all of those tags were scanned and updated with the new information. So, like I mentioned before, because we set update existing, every time it finds a match in here, it updates that entire row with the new information. Um, so, let me go back to those custom fields just to show you a little bit more about them. Um, I set two static values, which basically means it's capturing whatever value I type in here 
to the database. But you can also, like I mentioned before, if you wanted to, let's add a new field. You can also set a from field option, which basically means you can take the value from another field of information that's collected on the source side and use that as the source data for that field. So I mentioned before the sample was, I can say I want to grab data from the user memory bank and I can parse the data from that user memory bank. So let's say uh, if I, in my user memory bank, the first eight characters were a part number, I can say go ahead and parse it from the left for eight characters from my user memory bank. And now what this means is when this field is sent to the destination database, it's grabbing its value from the user memory bank of the tag and parsing the first eight characters out of that tag. So if you wanted to then set another field, we'll call this one part number, part number. Now let's say you also wanted to capture the serial number. So I'm going to go ahead to the custom field, add a new custom field called serial number. I'm going to say from field. I'm going to use the same use the same user memory bank and do a mid parse on that. And let's go from index eight, and let's just say the next eight was the serial number. So now I have two additional fields that are collected by this reader: part number and serial number. Those now can be mapped into two different fields in your destination. So if you have a database table that has part number and serial number, those values are coming from the user memory bank on the tag. So every time that tag is scanned, it's pulling out that information and populating your database with the correct uh, part number and uh, serial number. It's sending that data to the database. In the past, you couldn't do that with Clearstream because you couldn't take the uh, you couldn't pull that information apart from the user memory bank. You could always scan the user memory bank, but rather than getting two separate fields that you can post to your database, you're getting one big block of data that just says, you know, part number, serial number in this single field that gets posted to a single field in the, on the destination side. Okay, so um, that is one of the bigger features of Clearstream 4.0. It gives you a lot of flexibility in the data that you can collect on the reader and what you can pull from that tag. You can pull uh, different information out of what I think is going to be the most useful and most popular with our customers is the user memory bank. So the user memory banks can be populated with anything you'd like. You can pull that information from the user memory bank and post it to your database as you need it. And you can also use this condition option down below to say, hey, only give me this value if there's something that matches what I've selected. Um, things like starts with or uh, we also have options for like mathematical type comparisons, uh, not equals less than, greater than, and so on. You can have a lot of flexibility for how this data is getting sent to your destination. Uh, some of the other options I talked about in the PowerPoint, the tag settings, you can define now the date time format here. You can specify a date time format as you need it with additional resolution than what we had in the past. So you can get higher resolution date time stamps sent to your database. Uh, I believe people that have been requesting that will, are doing things that need you know, maybe a hundredth of a second resolution. You know, they may have uh, items that are flying by these portals at a higher higher speed, or you're just very uh, you're you're in need of an environment where you know which item passed first, things like that. Uh, that you can capture a higher resolution rather than just a second, which maybe there's multiple items going through in the same second. Um, so that's about it. I think that I wanted to get into today for the uh, webinar. Um, at this point, maybe I'll jump back over to the PowerPoint. Okay, one thing I would like to mention before we get to a um, to the question and answer period uh, is that we do have Clearstream RFID kits available. Uh, so if you wanted to reach out to your reseller or to us here, uh, here at PTS, uh, we do have a limited number of kits so that you can trial the applications. Not only can you get up and running with the fixed RFID software, but if you don't have hardware available, you can um, see what we have. Uh, the kits come with uh, fixed RFID readers, antennas, um, and some sample tags that you can see how everything would work in your environment. Um, so again, reach out to your reseller or to PTS uh, if you'd like to go that route. Uh, one thing I'd like to note on this is we're actually working on some sample projects in Clearstream uh, that we're going to release uh, shortly after uh, 4.0. Uh, 
sample projects are pre-configured projects that you guys could open up on your side that are built on top of some databases that we're going to provide to do things like uh, keeping track of uh, stockroom inventory. Uh, and also, and we're going to do an application like the zone idea that I had mentioned a couple of times in the webinar. Uh, so that you just basically do a file open in Clearstream, turn the readers on, and then start scanning uh, and seeing how the application would work for those different scenarios or those different applications. And then what we're going to do is for the sample kits, provide tags that match the sample data in the, uh, in the database that comes with the installation. So you can kind of get a fully working environment that basically you just hopefully have to wire everything up, plug everything in, uh, hit the start button, and then you would be able to see how it, how it works for those different applications. So uh, just something to keep in mind, that's going to be an upcoming um, uh, addition to Clearstream after the 4.0 release. Uh, so with that, I'll jump over to any questions you guys may have. Uh, feel free to kind of send over anything that you have on the software. If something didn't make sense, I apologize, first off, for not making sense. But uh, if you'd like me to elaborate on anything further with the software about any of the features I talked about today, uh, please feel free to type in. OK, well, I hope um, everyone is excited about Clearstream 4.0 as I am. Uh, we will have it up on our website for download. So any uh, existing customer will be able to go to clearstreamrfid.com, download and update their software to version 4.0. Uh, if you guys do trial the application or have any questions after the webinar, again, please feel free to reach out to us. So let me bring up our contact information here in the webinar. Um, if you have any questions uh, that I didn't answer today or that you think of as you're trying only the software, please, we encourage you to reach out to us. We get the answers uh, you need. Um, also, with any feedback on the webinar today, um, we would be glad to uh, we, we We'd be happy to receive feedback to know, you know how we're doing on these webinars. Are they focused enough on the stuff that you guys would like to get from Clearstream? Uh, does it all make sense and all of that sort of stuff? Um, again, I appreciate and thank everyone for joining us on the webinar today. Hope you got all of the information you needed. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone in our next webinar. All right, thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.